what is good in things and people and focus on that. Just squint a little. The view is much better. I think that is what they meant by not being able to see the forest for the trees. Mitch Anthony reminding you once again that life is whatever you make it. Mitch Anthony here to tell you about the R Extra Mile, a charity that uses your extra airline miles to help cancer patients get where they need to go. Serious illness takes a toll not only physically but financially as well with lost wages, chemotherapy, insurance deductibles, and travel costs. There is additional stress. The R Extra Mile is seeking donors of airline miles to help patients to find providers. You can help by contacting the rextramile.org, R-X-T-R-A-M-I-L-E dot org. That's rextramile.org, R-X-T-R-A-M-I-L-E dot org. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much for listening to A Word With You on WMCH 1260 AM. God bless you. The time is now 11.24. This program is a pre-recorded program. My dad was part scotch and part ginger ale until God got a hold of him. He saw a sign, Drink Canada Dry, and he gave it his best shot. Thanks for joining us today. You're listening to Laugh Again with Phil Calloway. My friend Wayne likes to tell me that he's writing a book. I've got the page numbers done, he says. <laughs> now I just need to fill in the rest. Well, he's right. With all he's been through, he could write a book. At 3 a.m., Wayne awoke again, shaking uncontrollably. A quick visit to the garage calmed him, but how long could he keep his secret? His home, once a gathering place for friends, had emptied thanks to his unpredictability and odd behavior. His children found excuses to be elsewhere. So did their friends. And Wayne's wife? Well, Lydia was watching the boy she'd loved since high school systematically destroy himself. Wayne and I grew up together. I played hockey with him, played music with him, worshipped God with him. But I had no idea his days were now starting in a liquor store parking lot where he was thirsty for the doors to open. I hope you're not driving drunk, Lydia said one day. No, said Wayne. She knew he was lying. I was powerless over this thing, he told me. I was completely and hopelessly addicted. One March day, he finally stood before his family and admitted, I'm an alcoholic. Ironically, few have opened their homes to more drug addicts and alcoholics than Wayne and Lydia. They'd seen the enemy's tricks. They'd seen lives destroyed. So had their children. But they'd also seen the transforming power of God's grace. In a moment Wayne will never forget, his daughter said, Dad, you need help. You need to go to a recovery center. Broken and desperate, Wayne finally agreed. Next came the pain of detox and the humiliation of telling friends, many that he'd helped out of addiction, that Wayne Nelson had been living a lie. Ten days later, his son Craig drove him to a recovery center 500 miles from home. I watched him drive away, Wayne remembers, and the last shreds of my pride evaporated. After years of telling addicts how to find freedom, I was the addict. My life, my family, my reputation, my future lay in ruins. How had it come to this? Wayne attended a Christian school, married a Christian gal, enjoyed business success and involvement in the church. He even held a job with a prominent Christian organization. I guess my upbringing was filled with rules for almost everything. Impossible expectations for a guy struggling with depression, substance abuse, and sexual purity, he said. Keeping struggles inside only helped them grow. Each Sunday, Wayne remembers, I looked around the church and wondered how everyone else could have it all together when I was such a mess. Alcohol helped dull the pain and silence the guilt. It soon became my refuge. All along, I relied on my own strength to fix the hurt instead of acknowledging that God is the giver of all good things. I finally understood that my own efforts got me nowhere, that every good and perfect gift really is from above. Everything I held on to so tightly was stripped away. In recovery, I found peace and forgiveness, but the consequences were enormous. My family had lost their faith in a husband and dad. I no longer had the crutch of alcohol to get me through the day. And I wondered, was restoration possible? Would I ever find real joy? You know, one of the enemy's greatest lies is this, just keep it in the dark. Years ago, Wayne memorized 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wayne has seen the remarkable results of confession, repentance, and accountability. He never set out looking for a front row seat to God's grace, but that's what he got. 
Bringing things into the light has not only brought him joy and reconciliation, it has opened doors he could never have imagined. I can't wait to tell you the rest of Wayne's story next time on Laugh Again. Have you felt encouraged by the ministry of Laugh Again? Then perhaps you might consider offering a gift towards our fiscal year-end goal. Our aim is to raise $99,000 by June 30th to position Laugh Again for another year of sharing the hope and joy found in Jesus. To give today, call 1-844-663-2424 or visit laughagain.us. Laugh Again, truth bringing laughter to life. WMCH Church Hill, Tennessee. I am not ashamed to say Jesus is the Lord. Send encouragement to WMCH Preachers at WMCH Radio at Yahoo.com. This tree was never chopped down because this crutch. WMCH Church Hill, Tennessee. The time is now 1130. Welcome to the Community Information Program with Mary and Ron Gordon. Should you have any topics you would like Mary and Ron to cover, please text us at 423-357-5601. And now, the Community Information Program with Mary and Ron. Well, welcome, listeners, and thank you for tuning in to Community Talk Program today. Uh, join us each Tuesday from 1130 to 12 for Ron and myself, Mary, to keep you abreast of some inter interesting topics. Today, our, topics is going, our topic is going to be about a book that Ronnie has written, and uh, this book is... Um, tells a story, I guess, more or less, of how he has overcome having a, uh, a being an amputee. And the book's name is Without a Limb, and it's Below the Knee. And it's he wrote this book for a word of encouragement. And hello, Ronnie. Hello, Mary Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth. We're here to talk about your book today. And... And what, I've already said it, but tell them the name of your new book. The name of the new book is Without a Limb, and um, below the knee, it's Word of Encouragement. And it's a real small, you might call it a booklet in a way. Yeah, I read it. I read it one afternoon, I guess maybe in 45 minutes or so. Well. Uh, it was just, it was really interesting. He kept my attention. And so why did you write this book? I wrote the book because, you know, there was like little issues and things and ended up being large issues that would help a person to know up front. I know uh, people have seen how well you have done, and it's not been abnormal that we haven't, they haven't given us a phone number for you to call and, and speak with someone. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you've talked to them several times in uh, different people to try to encourage them through uh, that being an amputee. Yeah, sometimes people ask me to go visit their amputee person, maybe for a word of encouragement, because they mm -hmm. quit wiring their prosthetic, so uh, prosthesis or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did go talk with them, you know, see if I could help them and show them that I had one. Right. And, you know, things can be overcome. Right, because, you know... You don't let it hinder you at all in things that you got do. Got too much to do. <laughs> got too much to do. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So we're kind of... You know, the manager here at the radio station, I have to take care of the <laughs> physical parts as much as the mental parts. Right. So uh, so you wrote this book of encouragement for someone, and why did you write another book? Well, you know, I like... All of a sudden, I started... I like writing. Uh, you know, I'm not a great writer, but I do have something to say. So I figured if I get this book in somebody's hands and need it, it might save a life. A lot of, no, I don't want to say a lot, but some amputees end their life. That's right. Because mm -hmm. they just can't handle whatever it is, I'm not sure, you know. But hopefully a book like this would get in their hands 
And I did, the reason I said uh, without a limb, then I put uh, below knee, I didn't want to um, mislead someone on, on, the, uh, on the book. I didn't want them just, you know, by it, not know that I was. They may have a total leg missing. I don't know what they're right. going through, right. but they could still read this and get some encouragement. You know, they could even write a book themselves on that. Correct. And you talk about blame in this book, so please tell me more about this. Well, blaming really is so detrimental. You either, either you blame someone or you blame yourself. Well, you can blame yourself all mm -hmm. you want to. It's not going to bring, you know, your uh, part back. And, uh, you know, they blame. It, the one of the biggest killers, one of the biggest killers is saying the word if. If I'd only, mm -hmm. if I hadn't done this, if, if, if. And you can if all you want to, but it's not going to change what happened. Now, the outcome can be changed if you get rid of the word if and quit blaming people. And, you know, like you could blame your wife or husband, girlfriend, boyfriend. You could blame, you know, a cop or person. You could blame uh, somebody that driving the other car, things of that sort, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the most powerful gifts we have is the gift of forgiveness. It's forgiving people. Right. And if you don't forgive, you really have, you have like a, a, a sore that won't heal. And then you have a, you know, you have a tremendous problem. Mm -hmm. So blaming doesn't get you anywhere. Ifing, if this, if that, that don't get you anywhere. You know, face up, it, it's there. Go ahead and make up your mind. Hey, it's gone. Let's see what we can do with this and move on. I know so many people have been amazed at the things that you you do, and and uh, they have said you've always you've been an encouragement to them. And you know sometimes people blame their self. They do. They totally blame, blame themselves. Blame self. And you know, like Ronnie says, it's done. It's over with. This is a part of your life you're going to be using. So take it and go on. Yeah. Now, I could if and if and if, but I, mm -hmm. I, I know that if doesn't help. So there we go. You have some pointers in your book about without a limb. What would you say? Yeah, you know, uh, take for example, you know, everything's hunky dory, but uh, let's say you're going to go take a shower. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's going to take uh, an art of work. But anyway, with little points and helps, you know, you could get in there and not, you know, kill yourself. And little points like that, what to do, you know, to keep your legs smelling fresh or arm or whatever it is mm -hmm. and help your, um, help you to walk, help you do many mm -hmm. things, you know. And the, the, the things that you learn yourself, you'd like to pass on to other people that maybe they don't come up with that idea or they have not been presented with that, uh, the little help thing. Yeah, I know when we were faced with this, we had to learn on our on our own. It put you. And, it put you. Yeah. It put you in shock. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you know, I I handled it well. You did. And you know, bath and stuff. You know, you're going to need a seat. Hey, I did write about that too. I said, mm -hmm. don't murder or kill your care helper, your care, you know, because <laughs> they, they didn't make you lose your leg, no. but you know, they're doing their best. And then, and you know, sometimes the people, you don't know how I feel. Well, no, nobody knows how you feel, but you know, don't murder them with your sad stories and don't murder them with your, your lashing tongue. And don't, mm -hmm. you know, murder them with being hateful. You know, they mm -hmm. they are there to help and you need mm -hmm. to appreciate that help. If you don't, one of them just live will slap you. <laughs> okay. But, you know, not only is it at home that sometimes you have things that you need help with, but even if you go on vacation, you're yeah, afraid you to rest your leg on or, you do. or whatever. And I know there's a couple of things that you've done in the bathroom that's helped you because uh, you can slip in the shower. Right. And Got them little uh, dollar tr yeah, play, dollar, dollar store things you have, uh, you know, that you put on uh, for shelving. 20, yeah, shelving, yeah. and it'll keep your foot because you only got one if you're missing one. Right. And buddy, that can cause you havoc. I mean, you really could fall, and you talk about feeling good falling like that. That you don't want to fall. No, you don't. Especially at the beginning, because you know most time you're you're getting a bathtub and you're or sink or the shower, 
mm -hmm. and your leg is not covered and you still have maybe stitches, stuff like that. Some people just take a wash off bath, but then eventually you do want to get in the shower, shower but it's still it tender and you could reopen that wound and you can cause double trouble. So right. there are, you know, some things in there that would help you quite a bit. And you also took that shelving liner and put some on the seat yeah, because your chair yeah. that you rest your leg on. Yeah, my knee, because, you know, if your knee's on something slicky, mm -hmm. then that thing's going to take off and you're going to be going down on one uh, a missing leg and that's going to mm -hmm. hurt. You don't want, you right. don't want, you don't want, you do not want any more harm than you already have. Correct, correct. And they, they really stressed that before you went home, didn't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I stressed that to me, too. <laughs> yes, yes. Like I said, Ronnie has done great with this. Um, you mentioned some fun things. Uh, some fun some, things, and like it's good, good therapy. therapy. Yeah, yeah, because, uh, you know, listen, folks, no matter what age you are, you can go out and play something. There is uh, bocce ball. You can play bocce ball. Bocce ball, you just roll a ball and try to get close to the little jack because they call it a little small ball. And the, the court is not really big. It's not all that. Well, not a, it's not humongous. I think it's like 12 by 89 or 81 or something like that. I don't really remember. Uh, you can play badminton. You can play tennis. And you know when you need horseshoes. Horseshoes. Yeah. yeah. You need to get outside. Now, quit. Don't quit living. Get out there and That's live. Right. Make sure you go to church, you know, do that. Don't blame blame everything so you can get out of church. But uh, that's fun, you know, going to church. It should right. be for you. Yes. Um, you can play, uh, uh, what's that? Pickleball. Pickleball. Pickleball yeah. Tennis. You can play uh, Frisbee golf or play regular golf. Now, Frisbee golf, you know, you just, you walk around, which is good for you, and you get to throw, you know, disc, and really should be disc golf. And um, mm -hmm. you get to throw those, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun you can have still without yeah. dying, you know. You know, when you've been cooped up in a house or and maybe where you work at or something, and when you get outside in the fresh air and stuff, it always makes a person feel better. And, you're lo and you, you see the greatness of God mm -hmm. more when you're outside and you're looking around at the trees and everything. I remember my prosthetic person. I said, what can I do? He said, anything you want to try to do. I know. So he didn't say not to do anything. You know, hey, if you can do it, do it. So he didn't say, oh, you poor thing, you need to be, oh, don't. And he said, go for it. So I went on top of the house and <laughs> helped my son fix the chimney or something. Other, you know, so, hey, go for it. Just be careful because, you know, getting up on top of a roof with a, a real, you know, if you've got a bottom leg, it's stiff. It don't, uh, you know, you don't have an ankle. So, you know, you have to be mm -hmm. really careful. You might have to get on there and don't, uh, don't feel um, fretful if you have to ask somebody for some help. Right. And if they, they laugh at you, then grab a hold of them. And as you fall, you can take them with you. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> you know, really, there are a lot of things you can still do. You can still mow. You can still work under a car. Right. You know. You I, still get on the roof of the house. I just know there Mommy's is. Mommy's done that. What will stop <laughs> you is you. Mm -hmm. Because you are your, a lot of times you are your worst enemy and you are your worst uh, non-healer. You will actually... Uh, cause an anti-healing thing. One thing I did write in this, well, I'll say that later on. Yeah. Uh, when, I'm going to read just one little part here that Ronnie's in Chapter 1. At the very beginning, he says, I'm not a professional, nor do I claim to give professional advice. I merely intend to write some encouragement as a Christian and with some layman suggestions. So... Um, he just wants to be a help to someone. And then on down it says, One must trust in Jesus for the complete healing of the lost. Practice, believe in this verse repeatedly. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So, you know, um, I hope people are not thinking I'm doing that to make money because I have not made any money on any <laughs> book I've written. But you can get the uh, book... You know, for your tablet, it's called EPUB. Well, you get off to Amazon, mm -hmm. and it only costs 99 mm -hmm. cents. That's it, buddy. I right. put that thing down as cheap as I could get it. So if you like reading off a tablet or your computer, 
you can actually get that uh, EPUB for 99 cents. So when you do that, you, you know, you have it forever. And everything seems to be going that direction, so not mm-hmm. a bad idea. It's five ninety five, but I'll I'll tell you what, if you can't afford one and, and you know, you come by the radio station, let me know ahead of time so I'll have one here. I'll just give you one. If you need one, you know, then I want you to have one because I believe it really will help you. Even even though you didn't have anything wrong with it, did it help you, Mary? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I live with you. You've always been an encouragement to me and I'm like Especially after what he just went through this past April and May, you know, it's just book, another book. Another book, <laughs> yeah, it's been amazing to help. And you have one question on here. You say, "What are some hindrances?" You wrote about. Well, some some hindrances are number one yourself. Yourself, you will not let yourself get better because you keep feeling sorry for yourself. You know, and everybody's got their own thing. Uh, you're, you will actually drive yourself crazy. You, you, you. Mm-hmm. And then that thing's not trusting, you know, in God. <laughs> the other thing is, is uh, some people. You know, when people come around and start feeling sorry, I'd say, I'm okay. Hey, I'm good, man. I'm, I Listen, I'm good. I'm ready to roll. They'd look at me so strange because they didn't get to give me that uh, feel sorry for me thing. I thought, yeah, no, you don't need your feel sorry for mm-hmm. Not being ugly. But right. I'd say, hey, let's roll. What do you want to do? <laughs> well, you know, this book, too, can be used for someone, not that they, if you've lost a limb, not only besides that, but, you know, some women have breast cancer, and, you know, oh, yeah. and and things, you know, so this is an encouragement. See and, how I deal with mine, they could right. deal with it. Yes, that's true. And one of the hindrances is, is not, you know, is the word quit, quitting. Mm-hmm. You just up and quit. Do not quit. I mean, I, you know, anymore, there are people that lose limbs left and right. You know, they for for different reasons. Some sugar, some you know accidents, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. some whatever whoever knows, maybe a right. disease or something like that. Right. And you know, once they've taken <clears throat> care of that, then you know you think. Well, I know back in the day, people hardly hardly ever missed a portion of their body, but now today it's more than ever. Right. Okay. Now, you know, you can either just give up and, and just, you know, sit on the couch and know this and know that. Now, there are sometimes there's pain. Some people call them phantom pains. I don't know if I have there or not. Mine just sort of burns, you know, and when it burns, it burns. But, you know, you can get medication. might help and it may not. But, you know, some days I'll be doing my work and it's burning all day long. I don't think a whole lot about it. Just every once in a while I might think think about it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, things like that, the pain can stop you. Mm-hmm. It can hinder. Yes. So do what you can do, you know, but don't quit. The word quit is the biggest hindrance. You know, just allowing it to overcome you. Don't. Get out there and do something. <laughs> we, Ronnie made a statement several, several years back at this uh a uh, place we would go down in Sevierville, and to take to ride a ride, he would have to take his leg off, and and he never takes his leg off unless he's going to bathe, or he's going to bed, and he said, "I didn't know I was handicapped until they told me." <laughs> they told me. And I thought. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you gotta take your leg off. I ain't taking my leg leg off. Yeah, (laughs) so he didn't ride, but you know things like that. Uh, It's it's crazy how people may treat you sometimes. Uh, You wrote about some funny happenings, and will you please share? Uh, I'll at least give you one. One. This one was (laughs) the funny things. I didn't concentrate this book on me at all. Really, I did. I've tried to put it on. There, but then I did go that one chapter and write about funny things. And I live on Watauga Street, Kingsport, and I was driving down to uh, Carter Trent Funeral Home right there where that four-way is. I had to come to the radio station because I usually do my work through the computers and reach down here. Well, I couldn't get into it, so here I go. <laughs> I was on my motorbike, and uh, I stopped at the four-way, and I took off. Well, my leg didn't take off. It stayed there. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I usually have this little black hose, a little round black hose holds on the, the metal thing that would keep it from engaging. And when engaging, it would ungage the whole leg. It would come <laughs> off. Well, that's the first time that ever happened. So I whipped around my motorbike. And I was on a nine hundred a nine hundred pound motorbike too, right. and I got around there and got it to you know Turn there, in. and then I put it on. Its, I put I put my kickstand down. I think I did, and I re uh, uh, there was a car right behind me. I said, "Well, you're not running on my sixteen thousand dollar leg." <laughs> leg. So I waved him around. He goes around, and then uh, as I reached over and got my leg, I was pulling it up in the air over the motorbike. Well, this dude, this guy jumped out of his car and he said, dude, are you all right? And I said, yeah, just lost my leg. <laughs> you know, that's all I knew to say. And he still stood there dumbfounded like, what in the world just happened? <laughs> No, we just, you never let it hinder you. A lot of people thought, well, you'll never ride a motorcycle again. Well, you showed them people. Four ride. months later. Four months later. From the happening, we uh, rode the motorbike. Rode the bike. Remember that. Yes, uh-huh. Well, yeah, you like and to ride a motorbike. Yeah. I do. And uh, you gave some helps in this book? Yes, yeah, some little helps, you know, things like what you're talking about that, uh, you know, uh, things about not getting out. Uh, no, no, no. Being at the house. And say you've got one leg, and you're at the very first beginning, and you put a sock on. Mm -hmm. Danger. Do not wear a sock unless it has that grippy stuff on it. On your other foot. Yes, yes because yes. you will fall. fall. Remember that guy I told him, I said, make sure you don't wear a sock. Make sure you got a grip or a shoe or something that it won't slide. And then the next time I seen him, he said, I did it. And I said, what did you do? He said, I did exactly what you told me not to. He said, I put one of them, my sock on, and he said, I was going through the house, and he said, I was all over the floor. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you want things like that, you know, helps, you know, helps to keep it clean, helps to, um, you know, you, you know, like, hey, take a bath, there, shower, whatever, every, every night, yes. and make sure you clean that prosthesis thing right. you make sure because it's touching you it's been through sweat blah 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 and i've heard people say they're smelling and said don't you and i go no i don't reckon <laughs> it don't mm -hmm. but now sometimes you take like vinegar pills and garlic pills it will bleed through a little bit you will smell it mm -hmm. but if you if you if you take care and keep it clean it, number one that's healthy reasons and number two you know you're keeping a good clean leg without something you know occurring that might happen on down the road right and you know he does use it's just a regular antibacterial uh, soap there's nothing special he just makes sure he washes and cleans that and cleans his leg every day well a lot of them tell you to use the same soap that you wash in mm -hmm. like if you use this soap use that to wash your mm -hmm. your piece in and clean mm -hmm. it Dry it up, give it time, you know, dry it when you get back in it, and da 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 da. Mm -hmm. And I, I, a lot of times, have been in mine, especially when I was working the other job. I was in my leg 10 to 12 hours. Mm -hmm. I only slept five so many hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't sleep, sleep a whole lot, and I did that for two years. And still, I sleep little, but you know, if your leg's in there that long, you know. When you get it out, you do need to wash and clean it. That'll help out quite a bit. Right. Okay. okay. I, it seems you mentioned the soul of you, and one needs Jesus merely to be completely healed. That, that's the whole thing. If you're talking about healing, we've got to talk about two things, mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can do all what the doctor tells you to do, but you're a mental person you know, has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so that would be trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that verse you read, you know, I could do all things. Christ. A, a person that is without Jesus, without the creator, mm -hmm. your creation, he's the creator. And he made you. And you somehow or another lost a part of your body. Mm 